All right, everyone. Thanks for coming today. My name is Chelsea Oakland. I'm with ARMLS. Um, and Kelly and I try and do these every month or so just to get you guys some training on the system and utilizing the system. Um, and today we're going to talk about subscriptions and portals. Anybody heard of those? <laughs> Anybody confused about what they are? No? No. Do you want to come up and do it for me and then I can come down? No. 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 <laughs> I have a visual issue. I was in IT for 25 years. Okay, so very good. I, but I need to learn how to do it. Here. Absolutely, right? We want to do it efficiently so our clients know what's going on, right? And we're getting out to our clients what they want to see, right? Because nothing is worse than that phone call, right? They're mad because they're getting something that's not what they want. So we're going to talk about setting both of those up today. But before I even get into the software, I like to kind of define the difference between the two because I feel like there's a lot of confusion when I talk to folks like, what's a subscription? What's a portal? Which one's better? Which one do I use? Well, this person's using this one and this one's using this one. So a subscription is a subscription. It's something you're subscribing to, right? We all subscribe to different weird things, right? Like I get this fun little box of makeup in the mail every month, or maybe we get a magazine, right? But if we subscribe to a magazine, right, does it make sense if I get a men's health magazine? Right? I don't want a men's health magazine. I want like Cosmo, right? Or something that, that I want to read, something that interests me. Same concept with the subscriptions within Flex MLS. You are, in our case, we're talking about an email subscription that your client is receiving on a periodic basis, right? And you're the one that's going to choose that periodic basis. Could be a monthly thing, could be a weekly thing, specific days of the week, right? Or you can set up something called ASAP where BAM, they're gonna get new properties right away as soon as they hit the market, right? So that's what a subscription is, okay? Before you set your client up on a subscription, you might wanna have a conversation with them. Some people are very sensitive about the amount of emails they get, right? So if it's something that they're gonna be getting, a, hey, I have this option, I can set you up on an email subscription, you're gonna get new properties as they come out, is that something that's okay with you, right? So that's the first option you have for your clients. The second option is called a portal. What is a portal? Anyone have kids in the room? Anyone go to the doctors, right? Do we have, I can, set a doctor's appointment right through my portal, right? I can log in, you can see your kids' classes, what their grades are, all of that stuff, right? So it's just a website that you go to, right? Everything has a portal nowadays. I can schedule my nail appointments uh, through a portal, right? It's a great thing. You, log, you go to a website and you create an account for yourself. Your clients are gonna do the same thing, right? You're going to send them a, a little quick email link. Actually, the system will do it for you. And then they'll click on it and they'll create an account, right? They're going to put, enter their email address. They're going to enter password, password, right? Because we got to make sure the password's right. And their first name and last name. Then they have the ability to go to that website whenever they want. And they can do searches within the portal. They can see everything that you set up for them. And there's a couple of tweaks that have happened with the portal. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time there. Half of you are probably on the old portal. How many of you are newer agents? Newer agents within the last year. Okay, so some of you are probably on the new portal already. Some of you are probably on the old portal. We did a little switcheroo last year. And it made the portal prettier and more interactive, like those, you know, those Zillow people and Realtor.com people. But our portal was a little archaic -y. So they wanted to modernize it and make it a little better and easier to search. And, but we didn't want to force everyone to switch over to the new portal. So we'll look at that for those of you that have your um, technology here and we can kind of see if you're on the new portal or on the old portal. And I'm going to show you where to go if you don't have it so then you can do it when you get home. Okay. All right. So we got to log in and someone mentioned why all of a sudden do we have two login screens? I know it's super <laughs> annoying. Um, so Flex MLS, the software that you guys use, it's actually owned by a company in Fargo, North Dakota. 
Okay, so there's some control that we have at ARMLS about it, but there's certain things we can't control, and this was one of them. They wanted to make a double login screen, and we're like, meh. Um, so now you have to type your username, then you have to type your password, right? It's one extra step. Hopefully in about a month, we'll go back to the old login screen. We are creating a single sign-on for all of the systems that you use with us. So it should look how it used to look. You'll have one login and then you're done, okay? Sometimes we can't avoid the changes that they want to make. Um, kind of is what it is. Yes, sir. So you, when you say you're talking about single sign, mm -hmm. is that for RPR and everything else? That's out so there? RPR is a little different, but when you are signed in, um, you can set it. RPR is not our product. RPR is a product of NAR. Yeah. So you have to create an account and stuff for it. So that will not be included in our single sign-on. So it'll be Flex Monsoon, any of the bundle products, showing time, um, and hopefully we're working with some of them right now, the cloud products, just to make sure it's a seamless, yeah, a seamless process. Okay, so you log in, this is what you get, right? You're on your dashboard here, and we wanna set up a subscription and a portal. The easiest way to set it up is from your search. Okay, so you meet a new client, right? And they're gonna have these search criteria. So we're gonna click on the quick search. And we're just gonna do a quick search here to get this number down. Although this number is awfully low right now, is it not? How low is this number, right? I don't think I've ever seen this number this low. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna say our client they're looking, we're going to do active properties. You know what else might be changing? I heard a rumor. Shh, don't tell anybody. You know how this defaults to active UCB and CCBS? Mm -hmm. Soon it might only default to active. Yay. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Okay. Please. so crazy. You have to go <laughs> in and change it every time. <laughs> so active, we're going to say our list price is between four, whoops, not four million, four hundred <laughs> and five hundred thousand. We're looking for a single family home, and I'm just throwing some criteria in here, just trying to shrink that number a little bit. We're looking up here in Scottsdale. Is this the portal or the subscription? This is just a search. So we're just doing a search right now to get us started, to get us started to set up our subscription and our portal. And we're spinning right now. Do you guys ever get that where it starts spinning? Mm -hmm. They get stuck. Sometimes I just start over. Still right there. Yep. See if we get it. You can always refresh it. Sorry about that. Sometimes it just thinks, you know, the computer is not as smart as you think it is. We want it to be. Is it a slow interconnection inter yes. connection that does that? I think that's what it yes, is, yeah. This is a very slow interconnection. Mm -hmm. Now I keep trying to figure out is it the internet, is it my computer, or is it operator error? Yeah, usually usually it's the <laughs> internet, right? Sometimes I, my mom will always joke, we'll be talking on the phone, right? She's like, oh, the satellite moved, right? Whatever's going on, something, something with the connection. So, and I'm going to do, we need at least four bedrooms. So I've got my search here, I've got 48 properties for my client, right? And now I wanna, what do I do next, right? So I've got my search, I need to save it. So I'm gonna come over to my save button here on the top. And I click save. And I'm gonna save my search. And stop me if I go too fast. So now I'm in the process, right? I did my search and I need to save it. You guys have all done this before. You've saved a search. So you're going to name your search and you're going to decide how you're going to name your searches, right? That's not for me to decide for. You could name it your client's name. You could add some criteria in there, however you want to do it. I'm going to say that this is for my client, Nick Jones. Okay, so that's just what I'm going to name it. And I'm going to say Scottsdale. Nick Jones, and he wants to live in Scottsdale. Yeah. So in order for a subscription or a portal to work properly, 
it has to be connected with someone, right? It has to be connected with an email address. So you get down here, I could just save this search and not connect it to a contact, right? And then come back to it later. But I can either connect it to a new or an existing contact. Well, this guy's brand new, just met him, right? So I want to create a new contact as well as save my search at the same time. If I had already saved Nick in my contact management, I could click existing and then I get a whole list of all the folks that I have saved in my contact management. Does that make sense? Okay. So because Nick is a new client, I'm going to say new. We're going to add his email address in there. Okay. So if it's existing, the portal account doesn't come up. Correct. Okay. And I'll show you, I'll show you. So there's multiple ways to do everything in here. This is the most direct way to do it, but I will <coughs> show you how to do it on the back end. Okay. So at this point, it's asking us, hey, do we want to create a portal account? You can do it here. And you can click yes. And what will happen is, I'm going to click yes. And then I'm going to select invite this customer to the portal. I'm not actually going to do it here, but you can do it right here. And what will happen is it will then shoot them an email, that email that says, hey, guess what? I'm your friendly neighborhood realtor, Chelsea, and I'm setting you up on a portal. Click here to create an account and then click and then they enter email address, password, password, first name, last name, and they've created their account, right? So you can do it right here. I'm not going to because I'm going to show you how to do it on the back end. And it will automatically send that email out to them. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to save and add a subscription for my client. So I'm going to save this search I did with my 48 properties and I'm going to add a subscription to it. Is my subscription going to send them these 48 properties? No, it's not. Okay. It's just going to send one, right? It's not going to send anything until there's something new to go out to them, right? So if I click save here and add a subscription, subscriptions only send new and price changed things by default. So as soon as I click this, I have to remember, and it will remind me to send them these 48 properties. And I'll show you. I'll say I'll go over that again. So I'm going to click save and add subscription. And now these are all my subscription settings. Can I really turn this down some? Because I'm kind of warm. Okay. Yes. After you did search, uh -huh. what did you click? I put save right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. There it is. Mm -hmm. okay, you got it. So these are all my subscription settings. And you'll notice my subscription name is just the name of my search, right? Keep in mind, your clients can see the name of their search. So don't name it like Nick Jones <laughs> Cheapskate, <laughs> right? Like annoying client, never gonna buy, right? Just be aware of that, right? <laughs> not, not that I want to do that, <laughs> that, but doing that, I will put some shortcuts. Yeah, so. okay. They can see the name okay. of their search and their subscription name. So then you have to decide who is going to get these subscription notifications. Obviously, by default, you're, you need your contact to get it. Your client is the one that needs to see the new properties. But do you need to be copied on it, right? Do you want to get a copy of it? Do you want to get notified when they click the link that's in the email, right? This <laughs> this fourth option here, enable preview mode, this isn't one you're going to use very often. This is going to be the one you use for those tough clients. And what this does is anytime there's a property set to go out on a subscription, so anytime something new hits the market that meets their criteria, it's going to come to you first and you can look at it and then you literally click approve, then it goes out to them. Okay, so if it's someone that's like, I told you I didn't want any rock in my backyard, 
right? right? You can look at all the photos and kind of vet the property, right, nice. before it goes out to them. But you have to make sure you're checking your emails. Too. <laughs> exactly. The walls are pink. Okay. So you can decide who it's going to go to. You see your contact. Nick is in here. What if Sally Jones' his wife? wants to get this subscription as well. Just add her. Just go ahead and add her in, right? Add a new contact, same thing, name and email address, and then she can also get that subscription email. Okay? Yes? So, you, I know you're probably gonna go with this, but um, they're not gonna get anything except what when it comes out new, and the, the next part is how the sequence. The sequ yes, so. new and price change properties. Okay. You can set it up in your settings for them to get pending and closed properties. I don't necessarily suggest doing that right away, but if you have a client that's dragging their feet a little bit, sometimes it's nice for them to see what they missed. Oh gosh, that property went pending. Yeah, you missed it. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. <Good> job. <laughs> Stop dragging. <laughs> those little, like, you know what I mean, those little sales tactic tricks. Remember I told you about that really cool property? Yeah, you missed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> then you choose your schedule, right? So this is how frequently they're going to get these emails. So you can do it weekly, right, and send them once a day. If you set them up for once a day, every day, think roughly like 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So the system will check twice a day for things, but if there's nothing to go out to them, they're not, like if you have a client that's looking to buy a $10 million home, how often do those come on the market, right? So it's only gonna come out if it meets their criteria. You can also choose specific days of the week. Like if you wanted to do, whoops, sorry. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, right? You can choose a monthly option and choose a specific day of the month. This would be more for like investors or someone that's looking to move here in December. And then you have the ASAP option. The ASAP option is instantaneous. So there's about a 15 minute lag time from this agent entering the property. The system says, hey, this meets Nick Jones criteria. I'm gonna send it to him. ASAP is good if you have a really motivated buyer in a, price, a really hard price range, right? You know what I mean? Anything, I mean, in, you know, I don't know the Scottsdale area as much as I know Central Phoenix and Tempe, but anything under 400,000, that is a hot price range right now, right? Um, so if you have a motivated buyer, ASAP is gonna be your best option. They're gonna see it, hopefully you can go look at it later that day, right? And get those offers in. Make sense? So choose your option, and then this is the email that they're going to get. So you can type, you know what I mean, this is the one that I have set as my subscription email, and you can type whatever you want to in here. Hi hey, Nick, are some new properties. The thing to remember about this, I'll get you in just a second, the thing to remember about this, every time they get a subscription, they're going to get this email. So don't say, gosh, it sure is hot right now, right? Because in December, if they're still getting these emails, it's gonna say, gosh, sure is hot right now. Does that make sense? This should be something very generic because this is an email they're gonna get over and over again. Yes, sir. So you don't wanna say, gosh, it sure is hot right now. Here are some hot properties. <laughs> you can. <laughs> um, can we put a header on there? Right, what do you mean like a header? Uh, uh, letterhead. No, I don't think you can. Can you answer that question? No, you can't. I don't know for HTML. Yeah, I don't think so. Now, when you send stuff out, you're going to get your little business card at the bottom in the email. Oh, it does. Really yeah, so it'll have your, if you have a photo in here or a logo, you're going to get that, your name, your contact information, all of that will end up at the bottom of the email, but not a header per se. Okay. Good question. Does it put the equal housing stuff on there? It, I think we have to have the equal housing stuff on there. I think that's the law. Well, it's the law, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, it. we would, yeah, we would, <laughs> we would abide by all of those things. We actually had a whole situation where someone was sending 
because actually one of our board members was sending stuff out and the equal housing wasn't showing up, but she wasn't doing it right. Um, but yes, it, and we determined it should go on there. Yeah. Okay. So the bottom, bam, we're done. We've got our message. So we're going to click save. Is there any questions about any of these settings? Yes, sir. So once you set that up for that particular person, you don't have to set that up again for, as far as that, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Yep. But you can come in and modify it. Like, let's say you set them up on an ASAP option, and they call you and say, oh my gosh, I'm getting like 25 emails a day. This has to stop, hmm. right? You can go in here and edit this, and I will show you how to do that. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to click Save. And look at this box, this obnoxious green box. Hey, you saved the search. I saved my search with the 48 properties. And I saved the subscription to send future properties, but I didn't send them these, right? So you're gonna wanna send them these initial dump, right? This, was, this is what's on the market right now, today, as we speak. So you're gonna wanna send them a one-time manual email of these listings. So you can click here and email these listings now if you want to. You can also come over here and click the email button, right? And we want to email these listings out. And I always do the interactive version. And some of you won't get that option and it's just in your settings. You've just turned it off, no big deal. Now this is going to send the 48 results. Does that make sense? And this email, you can say, gosh, it's hot out today, right? This is a one-time email. They're going to get it one time. Hey, it was great to meet you um, at my son's soccer game, right? I, I did a quick search of the Scottsdale area that you were interested in and your price range with the four-bedroom homes, yada, 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 right? You can write as much as you want to in this email. And see, here's what's going to show up at the bottom, your generic business card. So I've got my headshot in there all my contact information and it will show up. And then I'm just going to click email and email these listings over. Whoops. Sorry, I, I didn't put my contact name in there, right? You do have to put select Nick. There he is. Bam, there's Nick. I don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong. How so? Um, I'm to the, I was trying to follow you, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at the page where it has recipients, Nick Jones, Tess, and, sorry, okay. I apologize, I'm right here. So you are, so you're not. So what's happening is you're setting it up just to email a link, so it's just giving you a link. Oh, okay. Now you're in the same place. As you yep. said you saved my life. That, yeah. I think that's by default. That's setting so every time yeah. I did it, I was always there. That's yeah, I don't know why that's really, because you can also, the second option is if you want to use like Outlook, if you want to email it out by Outlook, you can do that too. But that's how I'm doing it through FlexMLA. You saved my life. Thank you yeah. so much. That'll be $25. Okay, I'll be. <laughs> Put in my, uh, my MLS. Yeah. Fees. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, so we sent them Sorry. the 48 properties and they're ready for a subscription, right? They're ready to get a subscription. So now let's look at it from the other side. I'm going to refresh and go back. Any questions so far? Nope. Okay. So now I'm, I'm starting afresh. And I want to check out my contact management because you can also do these things from the other side from contact management. And why do I not have contact management up here? There it is. So here's my contact management, right? And these are all my clients and got stuff going on with them. So we're going to go down to Nick. Here he is. Look, his portal's off. Remember, because we didn't turn, we didn't set him up on a portal yet. So I'm going to click Nick Jones. And this is the info. The only contact you really need in Flex for your client is an email. I mean, are you really going to log in here to pull up a phone number? No. Right? Maybe 30 years ago. Okay. 
So I'm going to come over to this searches and subscriptions tab. So, a couple of things. If you come here and this box is empty, you did it wrong. Okay? This is the search that's connected with Nick. Right? Remember, Nick has to be connected with a search for him to get properties, right? Because how do we know what he wants if he's not connected? You can also add additional searches in here, right? Because you know the client, I want to live in Gilbert, I want to live in Gilbert, like only Gilbert. Actually, I would be open to Chandler as well, right? So you have two options. You can come in and modify this search and add Chandler in there, or sometimes you just create a whole new search for them, right? It just depends. All of you are going to do it a little bit different, okay? So we need to have a search in there. And look here, I created my subscription on July 17th, 2019. It's Nick Jones's subscription. Maybe I need to modify it. All I have to do is click on it. Does this screen look familiar? Right? This is one I get a lot of times. People will copy themselves on it and then they want to not be copied on it. So they'll come here, they can modify it this way. Maybe you want to change them from ASAP to weekly, right? Whatever the case may be. Just remember, any changes you make, you do have to come down and click the save button. So is this where you can add an existing client to a portal? Not yet, almost, okay. almost. Okay, we're just, we've ha we're just talking about subscriptions at this point. Questions on that? All right. Next tab over, here's the portal tab. Okay, so we hadn't set Nick up on a portal yet, right? But maybe we want to. So if I scroll down, first you have to turn his portal on, right? And I'm going to click the on radio button there. And do you see underneath this little web address? Each one of you in your FlexMLS account is assigned a web address. And you'll notice most of you, like mine's forward slash Chelsea Oakland, right? That's my name. Yours is some semblance of your name, okay? This is the website for your clients to go to their portal. So if they ever call you and say, hey, I don't remember what that website is, this is it. Okay, it's going to be http portal.flexmls.com forward slash some assemblance of your name. Okay, so you can always come here and reference it. Now for Nick, all we need to do is just go ahead and invite him to the portal. That's it. So we can click invite to portal. Here's the email that will go out to him. And you can change this. Um, you all have a default message in there. You can change it right here, but you can also change it in your portal settings, which I'll take you there. And then you only have to do it once. The default one is very simple. I like to add a little like breadth to it. You know what I mean? Um, giving them a better idea of what they're looking at. Okay, so I'm good. I'm gonna send this over to Nick. He's gonna get that email, and then he will have to create his account. Let me show you what it looks like. I am going to, I'm logging into my email right now, just so I can show you an example of what the email looks like. And I would suggest if you have not done this before, if you are fairly new, Make yourself a contact or your spouse or your child, right? And do this. Do this with them. See what the email looks like. Play with it. Most of us have multiple email accounts too, so you can do it that way. So here's what the email looks like. Whoops, sorry. You open up your email and then everything goes crazy. So Chelsea Oakland, right, because it's me, invited you to sign up. And here's my note. I set up a customized website called a portal, yada, yada, yada. And I'm going to click sign up. And I already have an account, so it's going to log me in, but I'm going to show you. So this is what they will see when they sign up, okay? 
password, password, first name, last name. They don't have to put their phone number and address in there, but they added that on. And then they'll click sign up, right? Then they'll be able to log in to their portal. And I'm gonna show you what they see because I have a portal here, hopefully. <coughs> No, nope, wrong one. Hold on. Stand by. Do you have a question? No. that's like the home page for a second and then and this is a portal that I have set up for myself this is not Nick's portal so this is what your client will see right so they've got their news feed right the news feed is the new stuff right think just like think Facebook right when you first log into Facebook you see everything that's new that's where it defaults you to you can also see any of the searches that your client has in there that you've done for them, right? So they can go to the individual searches. What's GM? This is the, this is the search that I created, oh, okay. right? And that's what I named it, right? <laughs> no reason. My, that's my home. <laughs> that's where I live. Okay. So yeah, so that's that's just what I have them named. Okay. Um, you can click on okay. each one and make, see what's in the search. You gotta make sure your searches are properly named. Correct, okay. yep. Okay, and you'll notice I have a lot of pending stuff in mine, right? Because these searches are old, oh, okay. right? So most of these, I've had these searches in here for a while, so most of it is pending. Anytime your client has these buckets that they can put stuff in, so let's say you really like this property, you can star properties, and you see that number rising, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can also hide them, right? Hey, don't like this one, don't like this one. They can see it over here on the map, right? And my screen is small, right, because it's projecting. But you can zoom out, right, and see them on the screen. Can I squeeze this over some? I don't think I can. Is it? <laughs> it it's a system. feature. Which one is high? The star? No, the circle with the Yeah, line. like I call it the no smoking sign, the circle yeah. with the line through it. Yeah. The no sign. Yeah, the no sign. You can click on one of the properties, right? And then get the additional details or photos of the property. Scroll down, they can see, you know, this is all the listing info right the, about the property okay and maybe they really like it so they're going to share it right and a link maybe they'll share it to a friend or a family member look at this house i put an offer in on right whatever they want to do okay so the and what, you, what can you do with the hamburger the oh these lots. these guys so this is same thing share you can also contact the agent from here so if you want to email. That's them contact, contacting us. Correct. Not the listing. Agent. Correct. <laughs> See if I click on it, Good it's question. coming to sure. me. <laughs> Chelsea Oakland. Yeah, because I'm this person. I'm my own agent. Right? Right. <laughs> Conflict of interest match. Okay. Questions? So, will, will, like, as far as the subscription and the portal, will, like, in your opinion, what will be a better for the client versus, I mean, it so again it is it's true it depends on the client now you can create a subscription is something that's going to remind them the portal is not going to send them emails and remind them to log into it so you could do both and if they never set up the portal then they never set up the portal who cares right right so with with my in-laws mm -hmm. we're buying houses at the same time mm -hmm. Um, we set up a subscription for my in-laws. Okay. They, they, they yeah. don't know how to use the portals. Really there you well. go. But me and my wife used the portals and the subscription 
to keep track of yeah. what was going on as new things came on and we were able to mm -hmm. see them. So it's how, the way I look at it is, it's how tech savvy your client is. And I always ask, you know, do you want an email? Do you want to be able to go in and, and search? Because mm -hmm. some people really just want to and you can play around and search. And, and in save. your portal now, you can search. That was the big thing oh. with the change from the old portal to the new portal. Just like on Zillow. So they can search now. Yeah. And they can use... Uh, they can't save any of their searches, though. They can only search. And I know it seems weird, right? <laughs> Why can I do a search and not save them? We had about 50% of people think that it was amazing that they could do their own searches now. And then about 50% of agents that thought, mm, I don't know about this, they're doing it anyhow. They're gonna do it yeah, anyhow. On solo yeah, on whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. app they're using, there's so many real estate apps and websites right. and and I mean, I even do it myself, right? <laughs> I, I check my street scout, like, how much my house is worth on Street Scout, and then I check it on Zillow, right? I see what's selling in my neighborhood. So they can do a search on here. And you have a filter, right? And it doesn't give you a ton of different options. And I have this because I'm on my search, it's my drawn shape. But I could start a new search, right? Let's look in. But that's what I was gonna say. You can, you can draw a shape. Yeah. And, and do that. Uh, just like they can. Uh, they actually can't shape. draw a shape. They can Obviously, only put it. We have to create a shape and yeah. let them use it. Mm -hmm, yeah, and let them use it. But if they want to, maybe they decide, you know, I'm looking in Chandler, maybe I'm interested in the West Valley. Well, let's look in, in Glendale, right? And they can do that. And then they can add additional search filters in. So they just went active, right? We can watch their bubbles. Yeah, and they can, exactly, they can watch their bubbles change, see what happens, bedrooms, but they don't have a ton of filtering options, right? It's not going to, like, they can't search for, like, I don't know, tile floors or wood floors. And then as it narrows down, then they can click and actually see those listings. The only way that they can save their search is if they are using FlexMLS's IDX product. And there's, out of 40,000 agents, that we serve, I think there's maybe 400 that have that. So that's the only way that they can save their own searches, which is kind of obnoxious. But again, there's certain things that we can control and certain things that we cannot. The IDX run, uh, product is that additional cost? It is. So all IDX products. So what IDX is, you know how when you go to, maybe some of you have an I use at IDX, you go to your website. I think you do, don't you, Sharon? You have an IDX. So if I go to her website, I can search for four bedroom, three bath homes in Scottsdale, right? And what the IDX is, it's right here. Here's the MLS and here's my website, right? So the IDX provider is pulling the information from the MLS and allowing it to work on your website. And there are hundreds of IDX providers and they're all listed on our website. We don't really recommend one. A lot of them are independent. FlexMLS has their own. Um, but on our company website, ARMLS.com, there's a whole section about working with an IDX product. They all cost different. They all do different things. So we don't really want to endorse one versus the other. That's in your MLS, the IDX, who the IDX people are? On our company website, ARMLS.com, we have a whole list of IDX providers. Oh. Yeah, I can show you. Thanks. Uh, on that extra option you had when you paid your MLS fees, so mm -hmm. there was something you could pay $200 more for? Yeah, that's the bundle, the Advantage bundle. And with the Advantage bundle, you have, uh, well, no, not even with the Advantage bundle. Just with your um, regular MLS Pro subscription, you have access to Agent Squared. And Agent Squared is a company that will actually give you a free IDX website. You get the basic free version of it. Um, and then there is an upgrade, of course, to get more things. But the basic free one gives you an IDX option. That what the upgrade allows you to do is do more customization to your website and get a custom URL. Like if I wanted my URL to be www.chelseaoaklandhomescottsdale.com, you can do that. So we get that for the extra 200 No, you get that with what you paid. 
Well, what is the extra $200 for? It's this? for our Advantage Bundle products. There are five additional products that you get with the extra $210. It's, yep, you get three cloud products. You get Remine, which is like a, um, kind of like a farming product. And you get Rapid Stats, which is a statistical product. Okay, and we have the option of doing that. You do have the option to do that. You don't have to, but you can. Um, we're actually doing the second week in August. We're actually, ha we have Remine and Cloud coming here and we have some trainings going on around oh, the valley. So, yeah. so yeah, so if you wanted to learn how to use them or see what the, Remind is awesome. I'm not supposed to, you know what I mean, tap them on the back, but Remind is cool. Like the first time I saw a demo of it, I looked at my boss and I go, I'm gonna put in my two weeks and I'm gonna go be a realtor. Um, it's a really cool product. The, they're out of DC. The CEO is a very young real estate guy, so he's really innovative. He's really into the changes that are happening in the real estate market. Um, but if you are brand new, I would not suggest spending the extra money this year. I wouldn't do it. No. You have enough to learn and enough going on without adding five things on there. Yeah, yeah, don't do it. Don't do it this year. And, and anyone, if you call us, we would tell you the same thing. It's just, you know, some people are open to like new changes and they've been doing this for 20 years right and they want like different things and different items so we want to be able to provide that but if you're new learn this stuff first the cloud products they're just the same products available on the cloud or no it's um cloud cma which is the cma product helps it builds a cma for you cloud mlx and cloud streams are basically different ways to search the MLS and a cloud stream is kind of like a subscription and a portal. So you build your search in cloud MLS and then you stream it out to your clients. Um, they're really pretty. They're a little, I think they're more pretty than Flex MLS. Uh, but Flex MLS is changing a lot of, they've been really working this last year to like modernize their look and feel. Um, so as they keep going through the phases of updating stuff, going to kind of be one of the same. I, I had questions about integrating with uh, uh, social media. So. Okay. Oh, my God. Is there a free IDX on MLS? Yeah, even Square. Can't use that free IDX on your website? It, I they provide the website. Yeah. So if you and already have your website set up and yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't mess so with what you have. Yeah. 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 Because HS squared that you have and HS squared that they talk about is way different. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. Yes. Thank you. So this is what your client will see and what they can do. Now I'm gonna jump back. Let me get out of my portal here. I'm gonna jump back. Now we're an agent again, right? We were just looking at what the client sees. If your client let me get out of this person. If your client calls you, right? Oh my gosh, I can't get to the portal. I forget how to do it, right? You can send them the link under the portal tab. And you can also reset their account. Um, when you reset the account, it's going to send a link to them to get their username and password again because that happens to the best of us. <laughs> I had to reset. What did I reset this morning? Oh, my SRP password, right? Who remembers all of the passwords and stuff? Okay. So that's how you set up a subscription and a portal. Questions? Yes, sir. So the portal, basically, you're just giving them access to your to the MLS. They can set up their own filters. And they can set up their own filters. Remember, they can't save the search though. So there will be the search in there that you saved for them. And sometimes it's a matter because, like I said, they're already doing it. It's a matter of that explanation of the difference between what they're seeing online and what they're seeing in here. That's that's a big conversation that people skip, right? And they see private remarks. No, 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 no. They can only see public facing stuff. They can't see the private remarks. They can't see the commission, anything like that. Anything that is not privy to the general public, they cannot see. That's a good question. So I'm going to come over here to my menu. 
and I'm going to scroll down and there is portal a portal preferences section here and the portal preferences what this is these are the preferences that you have set up for your portal now some of you may come here and it's not going to look like mine if you have been an agent for a while if you're a new agent it'll look like mine if you've been an agent for i would say a year it might look like hold on this yes. because you are still on the classic portal the classic portal does not allow your clients to search it is not as pretty as the one i just showed you so my advice is switch uh, it doesn't change anything that i just showed you nothing changes about what you're doing what's changing is the view that your clients will see so how did you get into that uh, menu and portal preferences thank you so how is it you switch so if you're here if you come here and you want to switch you just click try the new portal and you switch and if you hate it but again it's not affecting you it's affecting what your clients see and what your clients see with the new portal is 120 times better than what they saw with the old one Right. So my advice would be to switch. Yes, this, this is embarrassing mm -hmm. because I'm not a new agent. So one of my business. Uh huh. She yeah. was talking to a relative. Like portal in the check your portal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is a portal uh -huh. automatically set up on the listing? It is. So it's a, it, you set up the portal for them so they can see any listing in the portal. Well, I guess she, if she thought yeah, I could see buyers from the portal. Mm. I mean, see. She, she was getting information for an unnamed party, you know, that type yeah. of thing. So I, there's no portal that I can go into and see people who just wanted that property. You know, there's some I see. real estate companies that have their own internal. They, oh, they put their buyers, is. like everybody in here had buyers, they put all what they're looking for in there. And any agent could go in there. If they take a listing, they go in there and see, is that there someone sense. that fits my new listing? But that comes through an outside entity. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was not us. Um, okay. That makes that makes a little bit more sense. Thank you. I was a little confused. Did you have a question? I was confused. Yeah. Got it. No, you got, got it? Um, I switched it. Thank you. You're thinking? So the mm -hmm. news, very far. The news feeds. That's where you turn on and on. Yes, I was getting there. Sorry. I got distracted. No, I, I was just clicking. Yeah, no, you're fine. Why I went, oh. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to my new portal. And you can see there's a couple of different things here. So intro, this is just the video for the new portal. Eventually, we will make everyone switch to the new portal. Um, we didn't want to force everyone to do it automatically, but we can only support both of them for so long. Um, portal basics, this is, don't ever mess with this. <laughs> don't ever don't ever screw with this right this is what creates your portal web address if I came in here and changed this any client I had that had a portal set up would no longer have a portal set up okay, okay. you can rechange that if you can change it if you want to they shouldn't have let you but um, that's not important here's the email right so this is where you can come and change your email overall like if you want to rewrite it and so this is the one I wanted to show you default subscription settings so I have my subscriptions that go out to my client for them just to get new price change and status changes if you want them to get sold or pending this is where you can turn that on so remember those clients that are buying right you can come in here and turn this but you wouldn't do it here because if you do, do it, it here it does it for everyone you would do it in contact management these same settings are in here so these are the big blanket for everything but all of these same settings are housed i'm going to come back to contact management under the portal tab and change settings 
so that you can add them in there. Mm -hmm. Questions? Comments? Concerns? So the listing content options. But I'm gonna go back. History is going to show the listing history. So it, it will show the sale and the sale price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like if they can see it, you know what I mean? Like for example, right? I bought a house that was a flip. So I know how much the people before me yeah. paid for it, right? And then how much I paid for it. So that can kind of get you in trouble sometimes um, depending on, or it doesn't really get you in trouble, but open up questions. Well, why did this person only pay this much for it? Would you want to see the picture? But they can see the pictures too. And that's what I would say. Go back and look at the pictures of what the house looked like before. Yeah, a lot of times they take those pictures out. Oh, do they? Agents do. Tricky, yeah. tricky <laughs> agents. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Sorry, you have a question. Yeah, this is just generic. Um, yeah. on, a, on filtering, I have a client that they just want a single story and it's got to be on the first floor. Is there a way I can that. Do they want a cond or yeah, they want a um, So you would want to in your quick search. So in the quick search, there is an interior levels. So you want one interior level, and then you would want to add in. Well, one can't do that with a condo because that's no. just the inside. You want to guarantee they're on the bottom exterior. floor, right? He wants a yeah. exterior. Go to unit. Exterior unit level. style has a ground that's level it. option. See, that's why I bring it. This one? No, it's this one. Dwelling style? Or you can just type in ground floor. Yeah. It'll come up. Or just have okay. ground. Unit. Ground level. Ground level. Now, I believe that this is not a required field. So that being said, so I added in all the unit styles so you can select ground level, but I don't think this is a required field, so some agents may not select this. So is there a cheat sheet for what the, what the uh, different check boxes that you can have for search? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean a third sheet? So, besides yeah. going and opening that option, every, every single, like, um, parking features and unit style. If you come here, you can see them all. We don't have a printable. Yeah, we don't have anything printable. That's, that but was my is, question. Yeah, no, but this is all of them. And sometimes they're called something different. Um, something that you wouldn't think. Do you do a lot of listings? Are you a listing agent? I am a brand new. Okay. Like so once you enter agent. a few listings, yeah. once you enter a few listings, you're going to know what all those fields are because you're oh, going to yeah. sit there. No, I know. And <laughs> well, that's why, that's why I was kind of like, yeah. is there something that well, there I can is, look at? Do, well, if I say residential profile sheet, do you know what that is? Residential. Residential profile <laughs> sheet. What do you guys call it? Well, he's definitely like brand new. Form? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The input form. That that is all the fields. Okay. Here's Can what we did get the import form to match the MLS. That would it be does. really nice. No, it, it does. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. What do you mean it doesn't? It doesn't. What are you talking about? Not even close. What? <laughs> Not even close. Stand computers. by. Stand by. So if you have a new person importing, no, she no. definitely doesn't put it in. Your oh, you mean right. from? I'm talking. You mean from? Um, to the MLS import. If you do it, that. See, I always, in my mind, I would do the input form before I would enter the listing. I don't know why. Because then well, I have. You do have to do that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. This. You passed over yes. news feed. What's the news feed for? The what? The news feed for. The news lock. feed is in the preferences. Oh, well, sorry. Sorry. Let me go back. Under portal preferences. It's all news off. Feed. Sometimes I have to look at it. 
mine's so mine's on so you're you have it all off so that's what they see in their news so they're not getting anything in their news feed right now all they're getting is stuff in their searches so the news feed remember i said in the portal it's like facebook right everything new pops to the top so this is what they would see in their news feed so like i have active pending closed and under contract showing in my news feed so i'm allowing them to see all that if you just want them to see active you would just turn the top two off. So it's, yeah, so just, just for FI, FYI, it's all off. So you have to go and fix it. I don't I think it's off by default. Oh, I think no, mine, mine was off. off. Mine was like No, that. mine was off. Was yours off? No, no mine was, was like off by default because I just switched the views. Okay. So listing content options, Did you, are you going to go over that? Listing content options. Open houses documents. Yeah, we just talked about that. That is what they can see about it. So if you don't want them to see the tax info or the history of the property, you can turn those off. Documents you would want to have on. So if there are documents in there, you're going to want them to see that. Um, open houses, it's kind of up to you if you want them to see, hey, this property has an open house set up this weekend. If you're showing, if you're taking them up for showings, you're going to be letting them know anyway. Right. So under email listing links, mm -hmm. they default to show the news feed. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the other feeds? It says it says show news feed, email listings, save searches. So in your portal, wait, is this? Oh, is this? Let me go back up. I always confuse this one. Yeah, that's the my listings. That's normal. That's your news. Oh, so when you send out, sorry, I had to think about it. When you send out um, subscriptions to them, they'll get a link, right? And they'll open up that link. So in that link, it will de they're going to see, it's going to very much look similar to the portal, but they're not going to be able to search anything unless they have a portal. So you can set it up to show the new things, the news feed. You can set it up to show the email listings, so the brand new listings that come out, and I think that's where it defaults to. No, it defaults, it defaults to show news the newsfeed. Does it? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the MLS defaults. Well. Or their saved search. So you can set it to default. I would probably set it, I would probably keep it at the newsfeed because those are going to be all the new things. That's probably why that's the default. Well, actually, the default is is a different one. MLS default shows which is the news. Which is the news. Oh, thing. which is same thing. Yeah. The same thing. It's like an all right. But if you show if you show email listings, that would be actually their actual search. So why would you like if I did a search for eight five two five eight? That would be the news feed. If I did a three seven We're talking about the subscription now. We're talking about because the subscription is what they get emailed a link in the subscription. Right. So if you send them a search for 8528 whatever, right. you're just gonna send those over, those properties over manually. Well, no, because you're setting up a portal not to send it over manually. manually. You're setting up a subscription to send them new things, not the original search not that you the did. Search. Okay, yeah. thank you. That yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I don't use portals very often. Yeah, so, everyone so. kind of gets that. It's, it's just, you just kind of have to go, okay, now I get it. Yeah. Yes. Because the reason I never use portals is because they used to be able, well, a while ago, they used to be able to to put saved ones and they call you and they say, well, I saved, blah, 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 and you had no idea what they saved. Yeah. Now I they show you what they saved? Mm -hmm. In yeah. the contact management. How'd you get to that page again? Menu and portal Thank preferences. You. So preferences and then portal preferences. Yeah. Down here. And you can just type portal preferences in here, which is much easier. So let me show you guys something. This is our company website here, airmls.com. Do you guys come here very often? Probably not. Never. Never come here. Well, guess what? Or a couple times. We have an online class about subscriptions and portals. So when you forget stuff that I went over today, you can come here. We actually have about eight online classes about all kinds of different topics from showing time, subscriptions and portals, adding a listing, CMAs. Where did you go? I'm sorry. ARMLS.com. ARMLS.com. 
Armless.com. Yep, you got it. Well, no wonder I don't know these things. <laughs> yeah. Um, a whole list of online classes. You can sign up for in-person classes. If you are a brand spanking new agent, we have a program called Jumpstart. Um, and you don't have to be brand spanking new. You can sign up for that. We have videos and webinars. We also have a blog that we write and send out. It's under the support tab, but you can also sign up to have it emailed to you right here. Sign up and keep informed. The blog is really cool, and I'll tell you why. Let's go look at it, support, blog. It's Saturday night, and you have a question, right? I can't guarantee you that you can find the answer in here, but what if I need to know how to change a status? See what we get. Is it is the Armlet's website the same as your MLS password? Nope. Yes, yes it is. If you're logging into it, so I typed in status. You need to change your agent status to inactive. Change status date range. Delayed statuses, right? Anything to do with statuses, you're gonna find in there. Maybe you want to change it. Maybe you have a specific, right? You want to change it from pending to something. So when I used my MLS password in mm -hmm. that .com, it took me to MLS to new plus. Well, what do you mean that your password well, what I is did armless.com. Yeah. You don't, you I shouldn't have to log into armless.com unless you're signing up or something. I think you just go hit the uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So see what plus. Oops, right.com. Now it just did everything in first because you're sitting there. Oh, yeah. so now it went on. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the only time you have to log in is if you sign up for a class. Um, right, what did I type in? Oh, pending. So anything, how to change a listing from pending to UCB, days on market, pop quiz, subscription or a portal, right? So there are a ton of different articles, and I would say 80% of them come from calls that we get into the help desk, right? Some of them are um, system related. Some of them are a little more fun. Like there's a couple here on Monsoon, one about transaction desk, driving directions in FlexMLS. This is all stuff that people call in about. Like we kind of sift through a lot of that data some of it's like local real estate stuff. Um, let me find one. So it's kind of like 80-20, 80% system stuff, and then 20%. Oh, you taught showing time. <laughs> what? You taught showing time. Oh, I time. I'm, I'm on all of them. So it's there's a, a big Facebook loop in most of the um, real estate websites about how showing time now will let you do a two hour window instead of an appointment. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you they hate it. Do they? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to find a tour window not. without an appointment is kind of a long yeah, time. Yeah, it you is. You have to go open a house. Oh, yeah. So here's an example of one that's more real estate, like, local related and less system related. Block 23 downtown, if you're familiar with the, what's going on downtown. Just an example. So, you yeah. You found that in learning? Um, it's under support and oh, the blog. Support. Yep. Thanks. Support and ARMLS blog. Yeah, so the blog and the learning tab, huge places to come to get answers and information for stuff. So come to this website more often. Yeah, no kidding. It's actually pretty good. We have a great website. But when did they change from time to do a two-hour window? Because it didn't used to be able I to do that. I don't know. Because now you can do a two-hour window. And for those of us that have to go sit at a house, a two-hour window is way too long. Mm -hmm. We're not yeah. a plumber. But you can probably turn that off. There has to be a way to turn, turn it, off it off in your settings. Yeah, there has to be. So you have a big thing on transaction desk in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Video. Yeah. It's mostly saying. It is a video. Oh, okay. So I'm saying can't change my name, but you have a big thing on transaction desk. Um, it's, it's one question answer, and that's why did you change the transaction desk? And it's talking about how AAR made that decision. Oh, yeah, that's like, don't know. come and yell at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't come and yell at me, please. So we get a lot of calls about that. We're like, we didn't do it. Yeah. Um, so I'm in my settings. 
listing agent preferences. Jack, the, the so, feed and loop just started happening in the last. Oh, there it is. So one appointment hour. scheduling, yeah, one hour, two hours, default yeah. appointment. See, because before, when you went into showing time, you had to set an appointment, and it had to be a 15-minute window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the agent knew you were coming within this 15 minute, and now you can do, it goes as far as two hours, actually. Hold on. I'm going to try it. A two-hour window. Which wouldn't be terrible if it was vacant and unlocked box, but... but but if you, maximum, if you have to go open it. I know. In an individual it. listing, there's maximum appointment length. Oh. You can change it. So then they can't, then that's going to prevent them from scheduling so a So there's two some very big agents in the East Valley uh -huh. that are looping this to our window thing. What do you mean they're looping it? Well, in this, this, all these real estate things okay. online. Yeah. So I'll just respond to one or two of them. Yeah, if say, you hey, go you into an individual it. listing, you can, you can set check, the maximum set the appointment maximum length to be only 30 minutes uh -huh. or an hour. Okay. So then you I'll don't go have help to deal with do that. that. Yeah. Say that Because, mm -hmm. yeah, she's ranting like no tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can only every imagine. single I can only imagine who it is. Oh, I'm sure you know exactly <laughs> who it is. From my old company, I'm sure you know exactly who it is. Oh, I wonder who it is now that you said your old company. Yeah, okay. Other questions, guys? Well, thank you so much for spending the afternoon with me. Okay, so this will give you a hint without me telling you. She's the same.